Super Bowl Sunday is this weekend. Who are we taking? What is the best move for Carmelo Anthony and the Knicks? How is the Texas Tech women's basketball team doing? And what direction do we think Texas Tech football is heading? Find out next. MCTV Sports 101 starts now. Hey sports fans and welcome into MCTV Sports 101. I'm Billy Engel. And I'm Kyle Stafford. This Sunday, the Atlanta Falcons and New England Patriots will face off in Houston for Super Bowl 51. Kyle, will Tom Brady make history and be the first quarterback in the NFL to win five Super Bowls? Or will Matt Ryan and the Falcons organization take home their first ever Lombardi Trophy? Well, first off, I just want to say I hope it's a good game because the rest of the postseason has not really been that entertaining. Mm -hmm. But I do think it's Tom Brady's time to shine once again. Uh, he's the best quarterback in football. No disrespect to Aaron Rodgers, but he has five Super Bowls and, or I'm sorry, four Super Bowls. You know, and he's <laughs> been. This is his seventh now. You know, this is his seventh time to the Super Bowl, and you know it's tough for me to bet against Bill Belichick. He's one of the great. He's he is the greatest coach of all time in my opinion. I think Tom Brady. He, he's making a case. I mean, there's a lot of great quarterbacks that have played. So I don't know if I will say that he is the best of all time, but he's definitely up there and and would be my greatest of all time for my generation watching. But uh, you know, I, I don't know enough about the Falcons. You know, I've only seen them play really against the Packers. I don't think like you. Yeah, I mean, you were talking about. Yeah, and I don't want to mention that you don't know a lot about the, a lot about the Falcons. See, and not a lot of people did. The Falcons yeah. kind of flew in under the radar this mm -hmm. year. Oh, they've like had that, that like playoff. The they had yeah. that uh, playoff burden on their back. No yeah. one really took them seriously until they got those playoff wins. But I'll tell you right now, and I'm saying it right here. I'm going with the Atlanta Falcons yeah. to beat the New England Patriots. They're a good team. And, you know, why, uh, they are a great team. And the thing is about them is you've got Matty Ice playing as well as he's ever yeah. played before. Yeah. He's thrown seven TDs, zero interceptions. And the last kind of playoff numbers we've seen like that was when Joe Flacco took his Baltimore Ravens team. They've been which, comparing that. And, you know, and that was a good that. season. That was a great run for them. Not only that, their defense right now is plus four in the turnover category. Mm -hmm. They're doing well there. Yeah, they've the, really stepped up in the postseason. They really Not really only grown. that, they're allowed – yeah, and these are all – yeah, these these are all postseason numbers yeah. that I'm dealing with, yeah. and they've allowed zero rushing touchdowns this postseason. Mm -hmm. Now, I think that's really big because they don't have one of the strongest defensive lines and, yeah. you know, d rush, rush stopping games. But exactly. Yeah. But they're doing well enough to get these wins. And New England on the other side, a big thing that I saw for them is they're not controlling the clock as well as they would like to. Their time of possession is well, just under 30 minutes. Don't forget, they have a guy named LeGarrette Blunt who can easily take over a football he game if they up. want if they want to eat up the clock. But I mean, that's if they want to. But season, though, and most of the time they're they playing, from, they're playing from the head, though. So yeah. you're wanting to eat yeah. up that clock and have that time. That's well, what I'm just saying it's a small worry that I'm looking for because you know Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons are going to be looking to try and control the clock and you know that are they or are they just going to try and outscore them I mean I would think that the Patriots are a team if I'm, a, if, I'm Dan, if I'm the Atlanta Falcons I'm trying to keep Tom Brady off the field as long as possible hands down all right well I'm gonna give my pick real quick I, I don't know if I went it earlier Patriots 31 28 I think it's gonna be a close game it should be a good one uh, don't bet I just don't bet against Tom Brady or Bill Belichick Falcons 35 31 all right, well, it's okay. You'll be wrong on next Thursday. So, <laughs> The New York Knicks are off to another disappointing season, even with the additions of Derrick Rose and Joakim Noah. The bad start has the Knicks looking to possibly trade Carmelo Anthony. Billy, should the New York Knicks trade Carmelo, and should, should Melo want to leave New York? Yes and yes. Hmm. This is a relationship that has been deteriorating really since ever Phil Jackson got there. Yeah. And just they haven't been able to work. They, you know, they, the triangle offense, yada, yada, whatever you want to do it. The last time no, the New York Knicks made the playoffs with Carmelo on the roster, was that, that was in 2013. Mm -hmm. And that's whenever yeah. he first got there. Everyone was excited. He had three years where he made the playoffs. Yeah. He hasn't been back since. What, wasn't there a Lynn Sanity during that time? <laughs> like two that was a part of that? Was, was yeah. that not the that, year that they went to the playoffs? Exactly so. Talking about. So you got yeah. Lynn Sanity going on at the same time. The last time Carmelo Anthony yeah. was in the playoffs with the think Knicks. Of Marcel so Marcel I, I think you got to get rid of him. You know, uh, there's other way. There's other places that I think could benefit from this. You know, he leaves there. He joins a winning organization yeah. with the possibility to go get a title. And then not only that, New York <sighs> can finally start moving on with uh, Christoph Porzingis, yeah. which is really the future of their organization. Well, well, he is, and I do think that Carmelo should want to leave New York. I do think the Knicks need to get rid of him. But where are you going to put him? I mean, he, he still got $25 million on his contract. That is not some chump change they could throw around, <laughs> even with the new salary cap. Look, it's tough. People are talking about the Cavs. I, that don't make sense to me. If him for Kevin Love, that doesn't make sense. No, not gonna because happen. it doesn't help either team. 
The Celtics, I've heard that rumor you talked about a little earlier. I, I, I don't like going to the See, Celtics. I, like I think he would just Celtics. mess up the flow and of the you, team. You say mess up the flow, but then again, though, Isaiah Thomas needs somebody not only just to help him out, but to create their own offense. Carmelo yeah. can come in there. But and he's the Isaiah point guard. He's that's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to create the offense for others. But if you put but Carmelo, whatever, it's a ball hall. No, exactly. He's going to I stand know, in the no, corner no, no, and take no. Isaiah, over ISO. Isaiah Thomas creates the offense whenever and helps everybody yeah. else on the team. But whenever yeah. he's slugging and he can't be the best every single when, night, when you're dropping you're gonna have 40 a game like he has, like the last couple of nights and 20 points a game in the fourth quarter, I think he's okay with some, without some help for right now. For right now. For but right if now. you're trying to tackle the ultimate goal, which oh. is the East and LeBron James and the Cleveland does, Cavaliers, but just Carmelo then you're going to need some. To, to me, Carmelo doesn't make another team better, in my opinion. I think, I think he does. I mean, it would Defensively, talk, no, but offensively, well, real quick, oh, yeah. Too, the Clippers are another team that's coming up, and they said that the Knicks would be willing to trade without – taking the big three, and that is Jordan, Paul, mm -hmm. and Griffin. I mean, yeah, if you're the Clippers, I would take that because then you could put Carmelo. I've heard Carmelo, people like say, come off the bench. Yeah. I think coming off the bench would be better. Of course. Uh, but it would add another score to a, a, to a bench and ease it. But, like, there's, there's the, no catching the Warriors in the West. Like, I don't care I would, what you uh, add. There's no catching them. They're the best team, hands down. Steph Curry's playing at the MVP level right now. We'll see, right. Yeah, we'll I, see what I happens in tough. the finals. Now, the Cavs, on the other hand, in the East, they could be They're looking, they could be they're looking to catch them. Yeah. The Lady Raider basketball team season is halfway over. Kyle, how has, it been how has the team been doing this far through the season? Well, they're off to a good start. I mean, they're 11-9 and nine right now. Mm -hmm. They have had some recent losses kind of in conference to set them back a little bit. But they do have some big wins. They did win at home over uh, number 18, West Virginia. That was a big win. Yeah. That was big for Candy Whitaker, uh, the coach of the team. This is her fourth season. I would say they've steadily improved each year that she has been there. I mean, talking about uh, her first year was 7-24, and 24, the next year 15-16 and 16 and 13-18. and 18. So if you could get to around a 500 level this season, you know, 11-9, and nine, you just kind of play – if you play 500 basketball the rest of the way out, they got a good chance. Also, real quick, Rasay Caldwell, the transfer from UCLA, she had to sit out last season. She's only a sophomore. She's the best player on this team, and she's already averaging 16 points a game in a pretty tough Big 12 conference. Oh, so yeah. imagine what she could do in two more years of play. Yeah, you mentioned the toughness of the Big 12 conference. There's four teams that are ranked inside the top 25, yeah. with Baylor being inside the top five. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of good competition there to be, to be dealt with. But, you know, one thing you did mention was the conference play. They're just really not doing as well as up to like we said it is a tough conference well, but you'd like they've been, to see they've been struggling on the road they've been better at home been and that's home. another thing you mentioned now. they're 10 and 2 right now at yeah. home which is good only two home losses so yeah. you're winning the games you're expecting to win mm -hmm. but obviously there's room for improvement well I, I do think that they are improving though I think it, it, it's slowly building back up and remember this was a very proud mm -hmm. basketball team I mean we have a national championship hanging in the Raptors Cheryl Swoops obviously uh, the one that probably the greatest women's basketball player of all time so I just think that they're building back up. Whit Candy Whitaker knows what it takes to win here. She was here. They went to two Sweet 16s sweet when she was here. Mm -hmm. I think she's got them going. I think they're going to be good. I'll we'll see. Texas Tech football takes another hit as freshman wide receiver Bronson Boyd has been removed from the team for unknown reasons. Also, running backs coach Deshaun Foster and offensive line coach Lee Hayes both parted ways with the university as well. Billy, what is it going to take for, to get Tech football back on track? <sighs> That is a mighty answer because there's really not just one answer to it. Uh, I mean, right now you've got a lot of things going on. You got a uh, defensive coordinator not even signed right now, and yeah. David Gibbs not even under contract. Not even I under mean, contract. We're, we're in uh, February. Yeah, we got coaches leaving at unsuspecting times. You know, during the recruiting process. Well, I can understand Foster leaving. Fo a little bit more I will going say back to I did have that. You know, obviously yeah. he was here for one season. He Nobody knows why Lee Hayes left though. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean still, another, still in the middle, right in the middle of the recruiting season. Yeah. I just find it odd. But really, yeah, right before signing day. I, I mean, not well. Not right, Not but a week really, or two weeks before. Weeks before the sign, yeah. leading up to signing day. But really, what it's going to take to get Tech football back on track, it's going to take a couple of years. This isn't going to be. We don't have know, a couple of years. This is this is year five. Year five. You should now, already be past the But see, the, the thing is, is he cleaned house. He got. He's he's gotten rid of some. It doesn't coaches, take you five years and, to clean some house. Coaches has left. He has one been assistant. In a, they've one been assistant in left from see, his original staff. Exactly. So now he's got to. That's you, too you much gotta, turnover you gotta, in five seasons. You got to add some more. There's not. Gonna, there's no better option out there on the immediate future right now for Texas Tech. I'm not saying there isn't a better. So option, So you got to ride I'm the saying. wave that you're given. Cliff Kingsbury. He's a great recruiting tool. He's a great offensive mind. He's obviously, a great obviously, defensively, we've struggled and we will continue to struggle until we get that fixed. 
But you cannot argue that he has appeal to bring people to the school. and He, he has, has appeal to bring offensive players to this school. And there you go. Your, be your biggest defensive recruit in a very long time, Brady Fajoko, he leaves the program with a year left because he said, well, I just think I can go build my draft stock better somewhere else. No, he's supposed to be the rebuilding process here. you got to work with those guys and make them better. Look, I, they did sign some players. They built some depth at the offense line. The defense – they showed some improvement near the end of the season. But, again, we thought that the year before. We thought that the first game. There's just no sign that this program is moving forward. It's always taking a step back. And now you look at – I look at this schedule. I put Tech with three wins next year, max. No way. Because, okay, now Jed Duffy is supposed to return, by the way. We did see, uh, we did see that he's expected to be mm -hmm. back and compete. Not saying he's going to be the starter or anything. They do have, obviously, Shimnek and Xavier Martin, the true freshman that's coming in that was highly recruited. But I don't see Tech with more than three wins. They have a very brutal non-conference schedule. And then on top of that, conference is just getting Tech better. Tech will get five wins, at least five. Maybe but still, four, you're going five, five. You're not improving. If you just go five and seven, then five and seven. We lost five and seven. Five and seven. It's going to be exactly. We lost the best quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. We could only win five games. You're telling me we can win five games without the best quarterback, Listen, one of the best quarterbacks in the nation? I'm not saying the future's bright. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, you're gonna have and we're gonna, something's it's go, gonna, we're have, gonna to have to rebuild. Something's gonna have to change. We'll soon, see, and we'll see what soon. that is. Because fan base, what's it, what is it? What's what's gonna change? Win. That's all I can say. We got to find a way to win and just play hard. Play hard. Give it all you got, and then we'll see. Yeah. But I think it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be a tough year for Cliff Kingsbury. Nah, I, I, I don't doubt that one bit. Well, that's our show for this week's edition of MC TV Sports 101. Join us next week for the latest big name stories in sports. I'm Kyle Stafford. And I'm Billy Engel. Till next time.